Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to talk about statistical approach to correlation between different uh, random variables. Well, this is part of the Unizor um, advanced course of mathematics. It's presented on this website. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because it has notes, very detailed notes, which can be actually considered as an independent textbook. So you have a textbook and a lecture because, you know, it's kind of like a real um, school or, or university or whatever. So anyway, um, we'll talk about statistical correlation today. Well, first of all, we have to um, realize that everything related to statistics is based on theory of probabilities. Now, in this particular case, um, uh, there are a few lectures uh, in theory of probabilities uh, part of this course uh, dedicated to um, correlation coefficient. Covariance and then correlation were introduced. I do suggest you to refresh your uh, memory and go through these a uh, couple of lectures, and there are some nice examples actually, um, which will basically give you the foundation, the theoretical foundation for statistics, which I will be talking about today. All right, so, um, being as it may, um, let me just remind you very, very briefly the definition of uh, covariance and correlation from theory of probabilities standpoint. So let's consider you have two random variables. Now, first of all, I have introduced the covariance between them, which is expectation of their product minus product of their expectation. Now, immediately you see that if these two variables are independent from each other then the expectation of the product is equal to product of their expectations and the whole covariance will be equal to zero so in a way covariance is kind of a measure of independence if you wish so if the variables are independent then covariance is equal to zero well the reverse is not actually always true it might or might not be so if covariance is equal to zero it does not really mean that they are necessarily independent but it might be or might not now the second thing which i have introduced in um theory of probabilities course was um, correlation coefficient between them which is defined as covariance divided by square root of their variances. Product of their variances. Now, what's good about this? Why did we scale down or up or whatever the covariance? for one very, very simple reason. Now, the uh, correlation coefficient is still zero if these guys are independent of each other because the numerator will be equal to zero. Now, for ultimately dependent on each other random variables, now, what do I consider to be ultimately dependent? Well, this. If A is some constant, they are proportional to each other or equal to each other, one, one of the particular case when A is equal to one. So that's the ultimate dependency. One value completely determines another. No um, some accidents, no, no randomness or, or anything else. Uh, so this variable completely defines this one. What happens in this case? Well. Uh, in this case, I can state that R is equal to R between two of them. Correlation coefficient is equal to plus or minus 1, depending on the sign of this constant. If this constant is positive, 
which means that this random variable is increasing when this is increasing and decreasing when this is decreasing the correlation is one and if the a is negative which means they're going into opposite direction one up another down or vice versa then the coefficient will be minus one so and and it can be proven that for any random pa pair of random variables this particular correlation coefficient will always be between minus one and one with minus one and one on both ends representing ultimate dependency and zero representing uh, independence okay so that's all about theoretical foundation of correlation now let's um, go back to uh, statistical correlation now what is statistical correlation well if I do not have complete distribution and I cannot calculate all these things instead I have se <coughs> excuse me sample values so I have certain observations where I observed C and eta. <coughs> Based on these observations, I can actually estimate, I can evaluate this particular um, coefficient, this uh, correlation coefficient, and then make a judgment based on the value which I have obtained. How um, these two random variables are dependent on each other or not. So, let's talk about uh, sampling. Now, if I want to calculate something like this or like this, now obviously if I have a sample of Xi, I can calculate this, I can calculate, if I have a sample of eta, I can calculate that, and I can calculate separately their um, mathematical expectations. How about this one? Well, this is a completely different story, because this means that they are together arranged into some kind of a calculation. In this, in this case, it's a multiplication. Now, what does it mean? It means that I have to know the mutual distribution of these two variables, which means what's the probability of this taking one value and this taking some other value, if I have at the same time. So if I have this mutual distribution, then I can actually calculate this uh, uh, expectation of their product. Now, since we are talking about statistics, nobody gives us any distribution beforehand. All we need is just sampling. But that's what's very important in this case. For instance, C is observed and it takes value in N experiments it took these values. Now, eta took these values. What's important is to synchronize their, these two experiments, which means whenever uh, C took value x1, at the same time or at the same condition or under the same circumstances, eta took value y1. So we need combined observation. That's what's very important. So we observe and we see that C took x1 and eta took a, a, a y1. Then we observe another time, and then it would be x2 and y2. And then we observe the nth time, we have xn and yn. So the observation should be mutual to be able to calculate this. This is very important. I cannot measure separately, have n experiments with c and get n values, and then completely unrelated to this event, um, take some experiments with eta and take these values. These are not related to each other, so we cannot really combine them into mutual distribution which is required for this. Only if we can evaluate the probability, the frequency, whatever it is, on their simultaneous taking certain values. So that's why these n experiments should be experiments with both at the same time or under the same circumstances. Now, what can it be? Just for example, um, it, it can be, let's say, in the financial market, it can be, uh, for instance, the price, closing price of some stock, and at the same time you have something like index, like NASDAQ 100 index, observed at exactly the same moment at the price um, closing, at the end uh, of the day, let's say. 
So you have, for instance, International Business Machine Corporation, IBM, and you have NASDAQ 100, so the day has closed, and at the closing bell, you have the value of one and have the value of another. Then you have the next day, do exactly the same thing, and the next and the next. So if you observe n times in a row, and each time you have both values at the same time, then you can actually talk about some statistical calculations, etc. Right now, if we have exactly this type of a situation, so when we can relate x1 to y1, x2 to y2, and xn to x to yn, then we can talk about calculation of their average of their product, mean product. Okay, here it is. So we have C taking the value XK and Ata taking the value YK and I intentionally use the same index K in both cases because it's supposed to be observ uh, observation supposed to, to, to give both values value of C and value of Ata at the same time or under the same circumstances. Now, if this is given to us, and we have n observations, then we can definitely start calculating what's the mean value, statistical mean value of, uh, of C. Uh, I have to have, I have to summarize all the values from 1 to n, and divided by n, right? Now, similarly, I can calculate this. divided by n. Similarly, I can calculate variance of C, which is it's an average of the square of deviation from the mean, right? So deviation from the mean is xk minus uh, e of C square. And we have to divide it by number of experiments and usually we put n minus 1 I hope you remember that to have unbiased evaluation well with large n it doesn't really matter but with a smaller n there is some noticeable difference so this is evaluation of the variance based on statistical characteristics um, we have received based on sample where e of C is this one. And similarly, obviously, we have for eta, we have deviation from um, eta square summarized and divided by n minus 1. Great. So all which is remaining is this one. What is the mean value of their product? Well, that's very easy. Since we know that C times eta took values xk times yk, at each experiment, we have n experiments. The value of this new random variable will be observed as xk, yk on the case experiment. So I have to add them together and divide it by n, and that's my mean value. So, and this is c times a. So we have evaluated each component of this. So we evaluated this, then we can multiply these two together, and then we can divide it by, by this. And that's how the correlation coefficient is actually calculated. Okay, fine. So we've done that. Now we have to make certain... I mean, why do we do it? <laughs> but we did it just because we would like to make some kind of a judgment on whether these two random variables are or are not 
related or dependent on each other, etc. Well, obviously, since we know that our R is from minus 1 to 1 with value on the, uh, uh, at the edges of this interval basically representing almost like linear dependency and value in the middle, which is 0, almost represent independency. So, therefore, based on this particular value which we have obtained using these calculations, we can make certain judgment just basically positioning our um, um, our co correlation coefficient on this interval from minus 1 to 1. Now, obviously, if it's very, very close to 0, then you can say that, you know what, probably there is no dependency. If it's very, very close to 1 or to minus 1, you can say that probably dependency is relatively strong. So what are the guidelines? So whatever I'm saying right now is rather subjective and it definitely depends on concrete circumstances. But traditionally and generally speaking, etc., whatever you want to say about this, um, if the absolute value of R is less than 0 0.1, so it means from minus 0 0.1 to plus 0 0.1. We probably should consider that there is no correlation in this case. If it's from 0 0.1 to, uh, let's say, 0 0.4, I would say there is a weak correlation. If it's from 0 0.4, to 0 0.7 moderate correlation and if it's above 0 0.7 then it's probably strong correlation and again the closer this is absolute value to 1 the stronger the correlation and the closer it is to 0 the weaker is correlation now these are no more than some kind of a guidelines and probably rather subjective my own personal opinion would be and it's definitely not like universally acceptable kind of classification so most li most likely in different practical cases you will have different opinion about this so that's how we classify the correlation now Let's consider that we have established that there is some kind of a dependency, let's say strong dependency, strong correlation between values of two different random variables. The next question is, can I say that one uh, random variable influenced another or caused another to be such and such, to take such and such value? So the cause and effect causality, as we are saying, how is it related to correlation? Well, that's not such an easy question. Generally speaking, correlation doesn't mean causality, because, well, here is what. Let's consider you have two random variables, C and eta. And their coefficient of correlation is 0 0.9, which signifies a rather strong correlation. Now, is it C causing eta to take value which is like in sync with C, or is it eta which is causing C to take this particular value? Or maybe there is some kind of a new random variable which we don't even know about and it caused both xi and eta to take relatively synchronous value we don't know that i mean it's not in the mathematics let's put it this way we might know about this from some other subjects like chemistry physics physics etc um geology medicine whatever you want, but it's not really in the mathematics. So, whenever you have calculated the correlation uh, between two different random variables based on their statistical behavior, it's not really uh, up to you, basically, to say 
uh, that one is the cause for another without any kind of additional consideration. But here is some consideration which might actually be important. Um, I was talking that both Xi and Eta are supposed to be observed uh, under the same circumstances or at the same time. Well, what if it's the same circumstance? For instance, we are experimenting with some drug and effect of that drug on the same person. In this case, the same person is something which basically combines, um, uh, unifies these two things, the drug and the effect of this drug. So if we always have this kind of a dependency between how much drug we get and how much effect we have from this drug, then probably there is a cause, which is drug, and effect. But it's not in the mathematics, it's completely from a different area, it's from the medicine. Similarly, in financial industry, for instance, you are m measuring how much um, uh, money um, Federal Reserve Bank pumped into the market uh, at, let's say, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And what is the closing price of the, of the market, some index, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Well, there is actually some kind of a dependency here, and obviously something which happens first might be the cause for something which happens second. Definitely not the other way around. So at least you might have some judgment about cause and effect in some cases. But again, let me repeat that generally speaking, the mathematics alone, just the value of the correlation, doesn't really give you any other information but just put this number and th th there is some dependency, strong or weak or, or moderate or no dependency at all. It does not provide information about causality. So correlation and causality are different things and causality can be derived from outside of the mathematical areas. And that's basically the end of this lecture. I will probably have some examples of correlation between different random variables in some uh, future lectures. Thanks very much and good luck.